economy and the world and every aspect of greed. Goes back to that 8% CD when the current market rates indicate the best you can get FDI insured, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation is 2%. What are they doing to get that 8%? Boy, I want that kind of return. I'm going to put my life savings in it. I'm going to go do it. I'm going to get it. Time Magazine had a uh, article of the 25, I'm not sure how they worded, 25 influential people, or 25 people that caused this meltdown of the economy. And I'm not too sure they were ranked in any specific order. But you had President Clinton, you had President Bush at the top, you had Alan Greenspan, former Fed chairperson, that type of thing. You had a lot of different people. Mordoff, his Pondy scheme, and things of that nature. You've, you've all read all this stuff. You, you've seen everything that's happened. But one of the 25 persons was a group of people like us in this room, and it said the American people created this. American people had a driving desire to improve, increase, accelerate their standard of living well beyond their financial needs. They wanted a house that they grew up in with mom and dad right away, instant gratification. They wanted that brand new car. Banks became wonderful lenders. Financial institutions, I won't say banks. It could be savings and loans. It could be uh, mortgage bankers. It could be loan brokers. It could be commercial banks. It's anybody that had Wall Street, anybody that had the ability to create funds for people to borrow, allow them to buy all the stuff they wanted but not necessarily needed. Are you all familiar with Maslow hierarchy? That, that, that's a good... Real quick, real quick, I want to get into Maslow, but you can get into people in general, life in general. It's a little pyramid, and it starts at the bottom. And the bottom layer is the basic necessities of life. Food, clothing, shelter. When you have that level, that's, that's the basis. And as you go up the pyramid, you reach a, a pinnacle, it's called self-realization. And each step along the way, you're kind of climbing the ladder. Well, I got my basic needs. Now I have my house. I have my car. I have my house. All this kind of luxury items. Then at some point in time, you have wealth, and you have everything you need, and you're just the happiest person in the world. You have self-confidence. You can conquer the world. You can do everything. But that's a real quick abbreviation, and you can probably teach a whole class on, on the Maslow self organization. But it's coming. It is coming. Yeah. Okay, well, I just gave a that's quick, good. quick prelude to it for you. But people, and we're all the same way, and businesses have prayed, P R E Y, as opposed to P R A Y, <laughs> on the emotional needs, all of the wonderful advertisements in the newspaper, TV, internet, the blogs, everything, okay? It's piqued an interest that I want. You have an interest, the neighbors, the, the Joneses next door, if you will. They've got that. Why can't they? they how do they afford that? I want that. And you go out and stretch. And you look at your income, you look at your budget. I'm making $100 a week, and all this and that, and food, clothing, shelter costs 75, 80 bucks. I have 20 extra, and I'm using the number, just it's not realistic. Then I have $20 left a week. Well, I can go out and borrow money to make that payment so I can have this. 
could be a camper, it could be a boat, it could be a car, it could be another house, it could be a swimming pool in the backyard, all kinds of little things that are not necessary to your basic needs of life. Then your wife, your spouse, significant other works, you have two incomes in the family. Then you start adding all that, their salaries together, and we can afford a little bit more. Well, next thing you know, they start a family. Well, then you have a family that both spouses got to keep working. Next, next thing you do, you got to have daycare. Someone watch your child during the day. That's additional cost. Well, we're getting by. Got a raise this year. Got a bonus. We can do this. Then next thing, the economy starts getting tired. One of the spouses gets laid off. That cuts the income in half. Or a third. Or what factor it may or may not be. All of a sudden, if you borrow the money, you can't afford to maintain your toys or the things that you wanted to, the nicer home or this or that. It's when your fixed overhead exceeds your income. A fixed over overhead is your mortgage payment, your utilities, your real estate taxes, your insurance, and all those kind of things, and food, and you can't make it. Or your employer comes to you and says, you know what, we're cutting back, everybody has been getting overtime, five hours overtime a week. When times are good, they got to make products, like for the candy business. At certain times of the year, Christmas is a big time for your company. You're cranking, building inventory, and you got to get it out. And guess what? You're paying overtime. Well, this year, things are a little slow. No overtime this year. And next thing you know, someone's counting on that five hours a week overtime. It's gone. And that could be enough to keep you from making a car payment, a house payment, or a second mortgage payment. Those are the things that are basic, what you all live with as an individual day-to-day -day life. <laughs>